Countess Elizabeth Bottery, also known as Erzsébet Bottery, was a wealthy and influential Hungarian noblewoman who was related to the Polish king by way of her uncle and the Prince of Transylvania by way of her nephew. She was imprisoned in her castle Kastis home until her death in 1610 after being charged with horrifying serial killings. Bottery reportedly murdered at least 600 people, setting a Guinness World Record for the most female murderers. Her deeds earned her the moniker Blood Countess, and Bram Stoker's Dracula might have drawn inspiration from her. Bottery may not have committed all the crimes that have been attributed to her, though. Welcome to Hallmark History This time let's devote our story to Lady Elizabeth Bottery, one of the most mysterious and divisive historical figures. The gruesome stories about the alleged crimes committed by the Hungarian noblewoman known as the Blood Countess have fascinated and horrified people for centuries. Hundreds of young women were tortured and killed in her castle's chambers, and yet some say she kept her youth and beauty by bathing in the blood of virgins. How true are these tales, and what exactly motivated Lady Bottery to carry them out? Don't forget to like and subscribe as we probe the legacy of this multifaceted and intriguing figure and investigate the questions that still surround her. Lady Elizabeth Bathory's story will fascinate, shock, and enthrall you like never before. On August 7, 1560, Bottery was born in Nierbader, Hungary. Bottery, an attractive and intelligent young lady, got engaged to Count Frank Nodesty at the age of 11. She is said to have given birth to an unmarried child who was fathered by another man in some accounts of her life. On May 8, 1575, Bottery, then 15 years old, wed Nodesty. The first child of the couple was born 10 years later, in 1585. Five kids were born to Bottery. Two daughters and a son survived, but two others died as infants. Her soldier husband was frequently away fighting Ottoman Turks, so they separated for the majority of their marriage. But while they were together, he might have taught her about torture methods. Nodesty's sizable estates were under Bathory's management when he passed away in January 1604. Bottery was charged with a harrowing list of crimes committed against minor noblewomen who came to her for instruction and training as well as female servants. After her widowhood in 1604, the majority of her alleged assaults and murders allegedly occurred. Bottery covered some of his victims in honey and left them outdoors for insects to eat. Young women might be stripped naked and coerced into lethal ice baths during the colder months of the year. Girls were occasionally tortured by Bottery by having needles inserted into their fingers, having their lips or noses cut, or being whipped with stinging nettles. She bit some victims' shoulders and breasts and burned their flesh, including their genitalia. Bathory's attacks were intimate, which raises the possibility that she had a sexual motive, though it's impossible to say for sure what drove her to do what she did. Bottery is frequently depicted taking baths in virgin victims' blood in an effort to regain her youth. However, contemporaneous witness accounts, which otherwise didn't shy away from gore, don't support this heinous act. Bathory's bloodbaths were first mentioned 100 years after she passed away, suggesting that they were a creation. The Lord Palatine of Hungary, Count George Thurzo, visited Bathory's castle Kastis on December 29, 1610, to look into the Countess' accusation crimes against women of noble blood, any mistreatment of servants was not a concern to authorities. He reportedly surprised Bottery while she was torturing a victim and as a result, locked her up in her house right away, her high status meant she would not be jailed as a common criminal. Then, three female and one male servant of Bottery were taken into custody, interrogated, and tortured. Early in January 1611, their court proceedings got underway. Even though they claimed to have buried between 36 and 51 victims, these servants still denied being responsible for the killings. They assigned blame to their mistress, each other, and a deceased servant named Arvulia who had worked as a maid and governess. The male servant and two of the women were given death sentences, which were swiftly executed. The fourth was not put to death right away, it is unknown what happened to her after that. Soon after, another woman who had allegedly used magic to help Bottery was also killed. Thurzo persisted in looking into the Countess after these executions. 
One witness claimed that Bottery herself had listed 650 victims in her papers, but other witnesses gave different counts and it is still unclear how many people the Countess actually lost. Thurzo also gathered 289 witness statements as part of his evidence. Bathory's family was prominent, so she wasn't put on trial. Instead, she lived alone in Castle Castus, possibly Walled Inn, where she stayed until her death in 1614. Bathory's assets were passed to family members rather than being seized because she was not found guilty of a crime. The evidence used to convict Bottery is flawed. More than 250 of the 289 witness accounts provided only hearsay or no information at all. A court official's second-hand account of what they had learned led to the testimony that Bottery had listed 650 victims, however, the official who was allegedly in possession of this information declined to testify. Thurzo, who oversaw the entire investigation, had ties to many of the witnesses who testified against Bottery. Additionally, the torture Bathory's servants underwent renders their confessions doubtful. Why could Bottery have been the target of outside plots? Family members were able to control the wealthy widow's possessions because she was imprisoned, her sons-in-law knew beforehand that her arrest was coming. She owed money to the Habsburg court, which they refused to pay. Additionally, Bottery might have been in danger because she backed her nephew Prince Gabor Bottery of Transylvania, who was at odds with the governing Habsburgs. Bottery might not have been completely innocent, though. A priest discussed Bottery and her husband's excessive cruelty to their servants in a letter he wrote in 1602. True accounts of Bathory's harsh treatment of members of the lower classes could have been included in the testimony against her. Even though Bathory's crimes were not against the law at the time, they still resulted in many ruined lives because Bottery was punished because it was claimed that some of her victims were noble women. On August 21, 1614, a 54-year-old Bottery was discovered dead in Castle Kashtis, located in modern-day Slovakia, where she had been detained since 1610. She was initially laid to rest in the crypt on her estate, but it's likely that her body was later moved. There is still one unanswered question about Lady Elizabeth Bottery as we wrap up our investigation into her life and legacy, who was this mysterious and divisive figure? Who knew if she was a cold-blooded murderess or a helpless victim of her environment? There's a good chance we'll never know the whole truth about Elizabeth, but that hasn't stopped her legacy from captivating and fascinating us centuries after her death. Whatever your opinion on the Blood Countess, whether you think she was a monster or a victim who was unfairly judged, her story serves as a warning about the perils of unchecked privilege and power. It's proof that the human fascination with the macabre and mysterious is as strong as ever. Our exploration of Lady Elizabeth Bottery has hopefully left you with more questions than answers, and we thank you for coming along on this journey with us. Don't stop wondering, investigating, and looking for the truth, I'll see you next time.